Hey, what's up, smoke machine people? As promised. Here's a video on uh, on the headstock binding. I did the uh, did the neck binding the other day, so now here's a a little bit of detail on this. I've learned a lot today, going along the way. Uh, this has been an invaluable tool. I bought this to pull frets, and it's got it's got this flush face right here. And what this allows you to do is make nice uh, flat cuts in the binding where you need to. And uh, let's see, what else do I got? Nice exacto with a good sharp blade on it. A little bit of binding tape. A syringe with acetone. And uh, another scalpel type of blade. And then of course uh, some binding. This is 060 by 250. Just your standard binding. And this is the stuff that melts with acetone. I mentioned in the other video that uh, you can't get some binding that doesn't melt with acetone. So just do yourself a little sample and uh, see what you got. And if it doesn't melt with acetone, you can use that uh, Duco cement. D-U-C-O. Duco cement. So, uh, once I get the binding on like this, and uh, check out the, uh, the seam detail right here. This is why I put the neck on first is because this binding rolls right up underneath the uh, the fingerboard binding and you'll see that on both sides right so right where the right where the nut is this stuff rolls right up underneath it And then, of course, this all gets trimmed away, and the nut goes the entire width of the neck at this point. So this binding right here and this binding right here is going to be trimmed away eventually so the nut can sit in there. All right, so what I did was bring it up to here and leave it long. Once I made this joint, this is the first joint I made on it, once I got that squared away, I uh, I just trimmed it and ran the uh, acetone in there. Then I did something similar for this. I bent this by hand a little bit, and then I made a little fixture to help me hold this in place. You'll see I got, once I got that there, I put this on, and then I clamped it, and that helped me hold it. And you should be able, depending on your head headstock shape, you should be able to make uh, something like that. That's old pallet wood, by the way. Looks like red oak. So, once you're at this point, now what I'm going to do is trim these flush right up here. Trim it flush here and trim it flush here. I'll show you how I do that. Take these and I lay them right up against the piece. Lay them right up against the uh, headstock. Make sure it's nice and flush. And just like that. 
see I get a nice square cut that trims it perfectly. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and try and keep it in, in the frame so you can see kind of what I'm doing. And this isn't something you can just go flying at. Take your time because you only get one chance to make this cut. If you screw up, you got to start over. Which is totally possible. I mean, it's easy enough to knock these off and start start fresh again. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Take your time. All right. So, uh, now you do a bit of trimming. And you can either take your X-Acto style knife or a blade like this. This is actually a scalpel. Or something that came from a medical kit. It might be a scalpel. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a scalpel. Alright. So with these you gotta think about how your uh, how your miter is going to end up. So with with these two joints, the miter is going to be uh, an exact bisection of, of this angle. So I know that my miter is going to want to go this way, so my cut is going to want to go this way and then straight across. So we'll do that with the scalpel first. And uh, it works if you apply pressure and then just give it a little rocking motion. So don't go nuts with the pressure, just nice and gentle, and then give it a rocking motion. And eventually it'll cut through for you. Clean up with the scalpel or with the uh, exacto. All right, and I I am leaving these a little bit long. It's just uh, a hair long. Let's zoom in on that one. That's the one I just did, and you see it's a, just a little long. And that's because. When we're all, when we're fitting the uh, the other pieces, the acetone is gonna it's gonna get all melty. And it'll melt the other piece into it. Same deal. Here we go. There's those two. Now, up here, I want to work on these bevels and cut those, cut those uh, at the angles that they need to be cut. So for that, I'll use the Exacto, and I'll just trim back a little, little bit at a time. That's all I'm taking out.
use that side. Take a little more off. You can't leave too much. If you leave too much, the the, uh, the seam won't look right, and it won't close up for you. So it's kind of a feel thing. If uh, if things get really bad, and you end up with a big gap or something looks really screwy, you could always you can always make a slurry with, uh, you can get a bunch of the, uh, the binding bits that are left over and mix these with some acetone and uh, make a slurry. And then you could fill in the gaps. It ends up like a nice putty. All right. So what I have here is just a scrap piece of like, eighth inch uh, from one of my necks and I've got uh, 180 grit and 320 grit paper just glued to it so what I'm going to do is take this for my first miter and this works really fast I'll be able to sand, sand the miter in. I've already done a few of these, like I said, so I kind of know where I need to be miter wise. Let's do this side first. That'll work. That's that's what it looks like. All right. So what I do then is push this baby up there, and I give myself a little extra. I make sure there's a bit of daylight there, a bit of a gap that I see which is the binding pushing it out and then I take my nippers and I come up flush and I'm cutting it with nippers but you could use whatever you got I highly recommend these I think these have made this job go much smoother Oops. Just take and sand my angle. This is riveting television, isn't it? I know you're on the edge of your seat waiting to see what happens next. All right, there you have it. That's what the seam looks like. And you see there's a little bit of a gap there and there. So that means this piece is just a, a little bit long, which is kind of what I'm shooting for. Look, I can even reuse some of my old binding tape. All right, so I'm just gonna put one piece on in the middle to hold it for now, to put it right where I want. Okay. 
All right. There's that one. Now we're going to fit the other side. Same deal. The 320 does a nice job with uh, taking the burr off. Let's see what we got. Uh, go a little sharper on that angle. Again, same thing with the nippers. Gonna roll up in there. All right, all right, all right. Okay. I went a little crazy with that angle. I don't like it. So, it's no bueno. No good, start over. <clears throat> See, it, uh, so if your piece ends up a little short, it's short, just start over again. It's a matter of a couple of minutes. In these couple of minutes, like I said in my video yesterday, will last the lifetime of the instrument. So, it's important to take the extra time and make it right. If you're still sticking with me, you're hardcore. I appreciate it. You're my kind of people. Even if you're not sticking with me, you're my kind of people. Smoke machine people. Because who doesn't like a smoke machine? And like I say, any machine is a smoke machine. When you don't use it right. All right, now, let's get this angle a little better than last time. All right, let's see how we're doing. Oh, that's much better. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Get some, some tape. Right. 
So, once you got it on there, like that, that's what it'll look like. Uh, you hit it with the syringe. Oops, a little too much. I think I had a, a clogged tip. I had a little bit of, oh, I'm really going a little too crazy with this stuff. Had a bit of a blowout there. But uh, typically what I do is, is hold it in place while this stuff sets. And you see especially in this top corner there where it sort of squirts out and uh, fills up that joint. That's what we're looking for. We want to just melt that stuff together. And it really doesn't take long for this acetone to set because it evaporates so quickly. And it's not setting completely, but it's setting enough to, uh, enough to hold. Look up there in that corner. All right, that looks good. Let's move on to the other side. Let's see if I can control my uh, my application of the acetone a little better. Even though that didn't work out too bad. And you can, uh, you can sort of apply pressure and, and loosen it and sort of pump that acetone into the joint. And that will get you some better results. Looking good. Okay. Now, we got some corners to clean up. Like this one here is complete, but this one needs work. And this one needs work and even this one needs work so what do you do well, I'm going to tell you what I do got a piece of wax paper here and this is 
syringe. I'm going to soak the outside of the of the corner and a little bit of seam. Then I'm going to push with the wax paper up against the bench. I don't know if you can see what's going on there, but that's actually closing up that joint. Just going to hold that until it sets, and that won't be long. Like I said, this stuff evaporates quickly. Had a nice ham sandwich for lunch. I don't know what you all had. It's probably, it might be dinner time by the time you're looking at this. Hey, maybe it's snack time. What do I know? I hope you enjoy whatever you have. I had a ham sandwich with uh, uh, multi-grain bread. It had a little salami on it too. So it was Bavarian ham, salami, Munster cheese on a multi-grain bread. With, uh, and that's what it looks like when you finish setting it up. So that'll scrape and sand off nicely. It should disappear when everything is said and done. And again, here's another, there's a before picture. We'll give it a little treatment. Oops. Lost my wax paper. Looks like I lost a little bit of walnut there in that in that particular corner when I was uh, using the binding bit. See that little dark hole there? So I'm going to have to figure out what to fill that with. I think I can uh, I can I can uh, make some walnut dust and mix it with either epoxy or super glue and just dot that in right there at that very corner just before I finish the guitar I could take care of that but you see I got a nice square or uh, symmetric uh, seam there with the binding nice and flush with the outside okay one more one more and then you're on your own. And you can do this because people do it. A little, little roll of action. mentioned it in my last video, it's Memorial Day weekend. And 
Да. Water has been beautiful. And this is very tedious work. Uh, next up, I'm going to be putting a radius in the fretboards, and I made this crazy machine. That's what that one looks like now. That one there. That's the one I just did. So I made this crazy machine to uh, to put the radius on the fretboards. And I'll, I'll use it for the first time. But I'm afraid to use it on these because I got so much work into them now. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want the machine to knock off my binding, or knock out the inlays, or chip this wood. It's uh, basically a router sled that that rolls up along here, and all those things uh, could very well happen. But let's hope not. All right. Well, that's uh, that's about all I got to share with you. Let's let's take a walk over here and see what we did. All right. One, two, three, four. There's two cherry, two walnut. That's Brazilian teak or kumaru with uh, block inlays. One of these actually has 22 frets instead of 21. It's a fancy one. It's like a little Easter egg. All right. Peace out, smoke machine people. This is John from Thomas Muse.